Mike. Oh, hiya, Duke. I hit the Cafe du Monde before they knew what was happening. <laughs> Score big. Yep, I got a half dozen croissants out of the big oven and some chicory coffee laced with a little something. There's some crates over here, Mike. Uh, you're up early. I haven't been to bed. Now, well, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. Depends on where you've been. In offices. Mine, robbery division, Gulf Coast Transport. Uh, no, no thanks. Just call you. Is that the armored car outfit that was held up? Yeah. Twice. Only this time they lucked out. One of the guards nailed an ex-con named Neil Porter. Gulf Coast Transport, is that your account? Yeah. My account to the tune of over 100,000 in losses so far. You want to change clothes before you go to work? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I've got two more miles to go, and I haven't said I'd take the job. Well, maybe you wanted that. I've had an investigator on the case, but he hasn't turned up enough to prove the gang isn't a well-organized party of worker ants. Who is he? Mike, it's Harold Kemp. Yeah. Well, send him in. Yeah, and hold all my calls if there are any. Mike. Al? <laughs> My God. How are you? Oh, I you. wish I'd known you were coming out of hired a band. <laughs> you grab a chair. Okay, thanks. Fax the cop. Let's see. Fax, uh, get around. Get around. There we go. Okay, lie down. <laughs> You've been here, what, twice since, uh, since Ingrid died? You found that chair just like you'd never left. Uh, you don't move things around a lot. Well, I should have moved that chair just to make it tougher for you. <laughs> <laughs> like old times? Well, it wasn't too easy on you, was I? How's it been, Mike? Well, some days are better than others. How's Francis? 
Well, she's very happy, you know. She has me. <laughs> I think about you, kid. They'll worry about you. <laughs> like old times. No, you know what I mean. I imagine the days aren't too bad. And it's gotta be a challenge working with this dog and that uh, girl, what's her name? Nikki, learning Braille. Yeah, the day's over before I know it. It's the nights. Huh? Yeah, sometimes you wake up and it's dark and... Out of instinct, you turn on the bed light and it's still dark. You say to yourself, well, there's not much to see in the middle of the night anyway. Yeah. Duke uh, wants you to backstop me in these armored car robberies, doesn't he? The way I look at it, Hal, is it's a chance to work together again. Well, I'd like that. And get the old A-team back together again? Where do you want to start? The man who was killed, Neil Porter. Well, he's one less junkie. Let's see here, he's uh, three arrests for breaking and entering, one big fall for armed robbery, two trips to Lexington to dry out, sick transit glory of Monday. Any friends, relatives? There's an ex-wife someplace. That's about all there is in the police report, though. Yeah, well, the police aren't out $100,000. Duke pages. Let's put together our own report on Neil Porter, cradle to the grave. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll get started on that. I'm sorry I uh, dropped the ball. And... What about the armored transport company? Oh, yeah, they, uh, they opened up their personnel file. You'd swear that they've hired all their current employees right out of a divinity school. What about that security guard, Frank Glendon? And he was dead when you got to him. Yeah, I held the others under cover until I was sure. I uh, saw your file. Master Sergeant Frank Glendon. He took back half of South Korea, Mike. Mr. Glendon, one thing. Sure. What did you feel when you realized Porter was dead? Last year, maybe 150 police officers were killed in the line of duty. That's not including guys like me, armored car guards, or security officers in stores. Maybe even insurance investigators. You tell me what you want me to feel, Mr. Longstreet, and I'll do my best. What's up? I got a copy of the autopsy report on Neil Porter. Oh, good. Uh, listen, would you read it to me? Sure. Come on. Two bullet wounds are externally visible. One is in the left shoulder. Entry and exit as shown in figure four attached. The second bullet, which in the opinion of the undersigned caused death, entered through the anterior chest wall and pierced both the left and right ventricles of the heart. No way of telling which shot was fired first, huh? Not from this report, no. Now, uh, Glendon's a crack shot. Harold said he put five shells into a target area you could cover with a silver dollar. Porter was left-handed. He got hit in the left shoulder. He would have dropped his gun. If that was the first shot, a 357 shell would be powerful enough to knock him off his feet. By the same token, if Glendon shot him in the chest first, he probably knew he'd already killed him. Yes, he did. He walked up and he checked him out before he waved the other guards in. You mean Glendon only had to fire once to stop Porter, but fired twice and killed him? Why? Why would an armored car guard, a trained professional, do that? Maybe he panicked. No, not Glendon. Then where are we? Well, instead of trying to nail a gang of thieves, now we're looking for a tie-in between a killer and his victim. <laughs> You still mad? He was gonna make trouble. Could the operation end for us? You didn't have to kill him. He was asking for it. No, Frank, he was asking for me. Okay. He asked and I answered him. Maybe we ought to have a pile here for your dear departed husband. I don't like that kind of talk, Frank. Come on in. Oh, uh, 
Harold called a while ago and said that you checked out internal security at Gulf Transport. How's it look to you? Well, not bad. They alternate drivers, routes, days of collection. It's not foolproof, but not bad either. How does Harold Kemp look to you? Well, not foolproof. Still, he's the best investigator, the best judge of human nature I've ever worked with. Okay. Duke, there's a guard, Frank Glendon. I seem to have seen his name in the newspapers. I like a quiet but extensive investigation done on his background. Look, Mike, we've had one armored car robbery where the guards sat on their shotguns and watched the money disappear. Now that I've got one where a guard made a fight of it and saved us a bundle, you want to investigate him? <laughs> if it's helpful, Glendon was born in Shreveport. Keep in touch, Duke. To the report, Neil Porter has an ex-wife, Leona. No local address or place of employment. Let's find her, Nikki. What's her maiden name? Uh, Devereaux. How'd you find her? Women's vanity. <laughs> I ran her name through the Central Credit Bureau. Six months ago, she opened a charge account at one of the biggest department stores in town using the name of Leona Porter Devereaux. Runs three figures a month. She's never missed a payment. That's a pretty steep overhead for the wife of a petty crook. Yeah, but there's big money in robbing armored cars, if you don't get caught. Or killed, like Porter did. Yeah. In the beginning, he was fun. Then he got hooked, and he kept getting sent away all the time. Now he gets himself killed in this crazy robbery. It takes a while sometimes to realize that somebody's really a loser. Well... He wasn't a loser in marrying you, was he? Thank you. A girl can't ever get enough of that. Right? 100%. Couldn't have been too happy about your divorcing him, though. The minute he got out last time, he kept trying to get back with me. And he kept right on trying until he got himself killed. You know, you can only give so much to any one person. And when they use it up, then you gotta go on. I think you can understand that, Mr. Longstreet. Yes, I, uh, I think I can. Did your husband, uh, did he ever mention any friends? No. All he kept talking about was our getting back together again. All right, Leona, thank you. Pax, come on, come on. Yeah, left, left, left. Uh, Leona, have you ever been to Shreveport? Well, yes, I was born near there, in Minden. And that's where you met your ex-husband? He lived there for a while. But we never met until I came to New Orleans. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, Lev. How's the rent paid? 500 a month in cash. She brings it to the manager's office on or before the due date. 500? Somebody thinks a lot of Leona. What did you think of her? Yeah, I thought she was sad. Sad and scared and vulnerable. And sexy and shallow. Must be tough to be that kind of a girl. Nikki, I want to check off transport company again. Each shift has 12 officers. The routes and collection assignments are in sealed envelopes. Given to the driver only. Still, the, the guards must have a pretty good idea of what collections were made and when. And it's only natural. The minute exchange information among themselves, it's the human element. How are you going to beat that? Excuse me a minute. Tight operation.
want you and Harold to meet me. There's been another robbery. Thanks for the company. I'm sending the guards to the hospital. I don't think there'll be any after effect from the tear gas, but they should be checked out. Good. How much did they get, Lieutenant? 55,000. Beautiful. Just beautiful. You two had the route map for this truck? Yeah, the dispatcher gave us a copy when the truck rolled out of the garage. And usually we know at least a day in advance, right, Harold? Yes, that's right. The robbery happened 15 minutes after they made the last collection. Now, would it have been asking too much to have the local precinct roll a couple of prowl cars in here, since we have had a few minor mishaps lately? Yeah, we should have thought of that, Duke. I'm sorry. Prowl car found in an abandoned delivery van on Valair Street. Kind of fits the general description. Harold, check it out. Okay, I'll get back to you if it looks like anything. Bomb squads pulled the exploding mechanism from underneath the truck. We've asked for a lab check. Fine. They think it must have been under the truck. I left the garage. In other words, you and Harold watched it roll right by you out into the street. I'm sorry. It's OK. Overall, you felt the internal security was pretty good. What do you want, Duke? Recommendation. What to do with Harold Kemp? I'll send him home to Francis. I'll share the blame for not pulling in the prowl cars. I uh, didn't check the route map, and I sure didn't uh, climb under that truck. But Harold also neglected to find out whether Porter had a pickup car waiting at Norex Manufacturing. He hadn't checked out the ex-employees of Gulf Transport, and he, uh, well, he knows just slightly more than the average suburban housewife about the circumstances under which Porter was killed. Well, it's not too late to check into those things now, is it? And as much you ask me for, you ask me for a recommendation. I must have torn you apart to say what you just said about Harold. Now, what I feel or don't feel isn't part of the problem. That isn't what you pay me for. Okay. He's out. I'll tell him tonight. Tonight? Yes, I'm having dinner with him and Francis. I have someone to hold his hand after I leave. Well, we don't have to move quite that fast. A couple of days, one way or the other. I mean, uh... That's 25 years out of a man's life, Mike. Uh, there could be some kind of a break in the case. I wouldn't have listened to that if it came from you, and you know it. But I can't say it to the front office. Mike, you're gonna have to come up with something, or they'll have his head. <laughs> what about mine? When they start, they seldom stop with just one. And that's when you backtrack and try to tell them it was all a big mistake. <laughs> hey, Mike, how about a little, little snip to you? Uh, no, 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 thanks, Al. I'm fine. Well, I think I'll have another little one. Hal, don't you think maybe you've had enough? Francis, honey, if I thought I'd had enough, I wouldn't take any more now, would I? I'll put up some coffee. Hal, that, uh, that delivery van does look like it might be the one used in the robbery. No, no, it had dust an inch thick all over it. You know, those cops that notified the lieutenant, they, they wanted him to know that they were wide awake. Anyway, gave you a chance to talk to Duke alone. What do you have to say? Well, he's, uh, he's in trouble, Hal. Yeah. So am I. I'm 15 years older than he is, Two daughters, college age. How much you want me to cry for him? And uh, how does Harold Kemp look to you? Well, not foolproof. Nikki and I are checking out Leona Porter. Who? The wife of the man that Glennon shot. Oh. You think I should have followed up on her? And usually we know at least a day in advance, right, Harold? Mike. Mike, you're, you're, you're helping him dig my grave. I must have torn you apart.
smart to say what you just said about you her. You want me to jump in here beside you and, and grab another shovel? Well, let me tell you something, kid. I'll tell him tonight. If you went to bat for me with Duke today, I don't appreciate it. If you said to him, let's find something for him to do in the office, like interview the new employees or run the mimeograph machine. Okay. He's out. I'm not grateful. When you broke me in, he used to call me kid. Never minded it then because there was affection in it. What does it mean now? Mike, what am I going to do? You're going to let me help you with the dishes. That's what you're going to do. All night long, I can feel him lying there next to me in bed, staring up at the ceiling, worrying. Well, sure he's worrying. He's, uh, he's got a tough case. He's under a lot of pressure. Needs some help. Anybody would. That's what I'm here for. And that's all there is to it? <laughs> that's all. something I don't know already. Okay. I'm really not sure I... I can still handle it. Now, you mentioned something before about Duke trying to get rid of you so he and I could talk. He doesn't pay me to kid him. If you really were washed up, he'd have you home in your rose garden and I'd be... I'd be working with some bright young kid on this one. <laughs> some bright young kid who won't be as good as you are for another 20 years, if he ever is. Max, come. come. Uh, Mike, I'll have the full report in on Porter tomorrow. I'm also getting the follow-up reports on every Gulf Transport employee who's been discharged for cause in the last five years. Try not to wrap up the whole thing before I wake up in the morning, will you? Good night. Good night. Mike, you're, you're, you're helping him dig my grave. Max. Pax. Nikki, it's Duke. I stopped by to see how dinner went. Where's your car, Duke? Around the corner? Why? Now, if Hal made the light on Dauphine, we could probably pick him up at Ninth and Rampart. You want to follow him? Okay. Oh, forget it. He's going to turn left on Rampart. Drive south to Giraud, pull in the driveway at 9921, go into his house, lie down next to his wife, and wonder how close he is to the end of his rope. That's exactly what he's going to do, and that's, that's all he's going to do. Mike, do you suspect Harold? Sleep at all last night? Yeah, two or three hours. Probably more than Harold. Hey, slide down. Hal, well, Duke, what have you got? Report came in on Glendon. Sounds like a prepared recommendation. Korean War, Bronze Star for gallantry, chief bank guard, Minden, 55 to 60. Minden? Neil Porter spent some time in Minden. His wife, Leona, was born there. Is this a private conversation, or can anybody get? Duke, we have three different people we can connect to the same small Louisiana town 20 years ago. The dead man, Neil Porter, his wife, Leona, and a man who killed him, Frank Glendon. Now, there's a series of robberies in New Orleans. 
And all three of them are tied to those robberies in some way. Are you going to tell Harold what you're on to? Sure. You need me? No, no thanks. I'll catch you later. Pax, heel. Come on. Come on. Come forward. Something I can do for you, ma'am? He's known Harold Kemp a long time, hasn't he? Yeah. Harold broke Mike in as an investigator when he was green as grass and still needed help tying his shoelaces. Hey, are you all right? You know, the better Mike does with this case, the worse it seems like Harold was doing with it. And you know Mike's aware of that. Bothers you, doesn't it? Yes. And I know it must bother Mike. It's worse than that, Nikki. Mike suspects that Hal's involved in the robberies. The uh, coroner's jury came with a verdict on the Glendon shooting of Porter. Justifiable homicide. Yeah, what else? Uh, hey, want some help there? No, no, thanks. I've got it. Nikki and I went over the route. Golf truck 131 will be taken. Collection should be close to $75,000. That's almost as much as the gang got in the first two robberies. Well, I think they're going to pull on their horns for a while. No, I don't think so. I think whoever's involved is going to go all the way with this one. Biggest score in New Orleans history or a wipeout. Now, if I were going to knock over that shipment, this is just where I'd do it. Well, I'll uh, get a hold of Lieutenant Hayes. We'll have enough cops in that area to handle a small war. Oh, you want to get in the files on Gulf Transport's ex-employees? We've already got a couple of candidates for you. Oh, I'd rather hear more about Neil Porter. Oh, that's a dead end, Mike. He's the original loser, just got himself knocked off, and now the sovereign state of Louisiana says it's justifiable homicide. What about his service record? Well, he enlisted in the Army. See, he was transferred to Far Eastern Command 1951, court martial 52, stockade six months, and a bad conduct discharge. But say why he went to the stockade? Well, theft of narcotics. He's a 20-year junkie. That war seems like a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I spent six months myself over there. <laughs> Mike, while he was working as a bank guard in Minden, Frank Linden room with the William Devereaux family. Well, that's Leona Porter's family. That's Leona Porter's family. And that's not all. The NCO in charge of the stockade in Pusan, South Korea, was Frank Linden. Frank Linden? It sounds like we're getting warmer, Duke. Tomorrow, I'll bring Harold up to date. Fitz, but you and I will work it out together. Neil Porter was in the stockade in January of 1952. Well, keep going. And the NCO in charge of that same stockade was Frank Glendon. Glendon? Right. But after he shot Porter, Glendon swore he never saw him before in his life. Well, it's conceivable he hadn't. Yeah, but it's not likely, because ten years later, Glendon roomed with a family in Minden whose daughter eventually married Neil Porter. Let's arrange for Glenda to make that collection run tomorrow. We'll spread the word. It's a fat one. If he really is involved, he won't be able to pass it up. I never realized what a good teacher I really was. We're having dinner together tonight, and then we're going dancing. As long as there's a place with a band, it's still open. <laughs> we're what? We're going dancing. You, me, and Nikki. Oh, oh, okay. What's the occasion? Uh, tomorrow is my birthday, and um, Alice is out of town with the kids. Duke wants you to backstop me on these armored car robberies, doesn't he? 
I guess we ought to call it a night. Mike has a big day ahead of him. Mike, you're, you're, you're helping him dig my grave. Oh, he won't want us to quit early because of him. Early? <laughs> you know, I've got a good feeling about tomorrow. I think whoever's involved is going to go all the way with this one. Um, today. <laughs> Uh, I borrow your phone, please. Here you are, Mr. Longstreet. Thank you. Nicky? Oh, he's waiting for some information from the Department of Defense. I guess it's morning in Korea now. All right, thank you. I think so. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. That's a pretty stiff one, Mike. That's okay, I'm not driving. Would you like to dance, Mike? I haven't danced in a long time, Nikki. I know. Guess the place is pretty empty, huh? Well, the governor just walked in with a party of 150, but uh, outside of that, there's just the bartender, a couple of night owls, and, and us. <laughs> okay, let's give it a try. Okay. Time? He sure is. <laughs> it's not his birthday, though, is it? No. No, he just wanted you to relax. Now, don't you understand, Frank? They're going to be waiting for you. Mike picked the exact intersection. We'll go ahead, exactly as planned. But they could wipe out your whole operation. Punks we've been working with, we can throw away at no great loss. The main thing is, where are you and Longstreet going to be? What are you talking about? Longstreet tied me and Neil Porter and Leona together. You think he's that far behind you? Frank, I can't. Have to. I don't care about the money this time. After he's dead, we'll call it a day. Frank, you don't understand. Yes, I do. Where will he be, Harold? Lieutenant Hayes will be driving an unmarked green sedan. Mike and I are riding with him. Any word from Washington? No, not yet. Mike, if something happens tomorrow, you'll know that Harold wasn't involved, right? Yeah, maybe. But if nothing happens, he could have tipped the gang off. Hey, listen to music. I haven't seen you wearing a gun in almost eight years. Well, I'm going to have to skip the eggs this morning. Hal, you don't have to prove anything to me, you know. Or to Mike, or anybody. Francis, Mike and I are very close to the end of a successful investigation. But I'm taking the gun because people who hold up armored cars sometimes balk at the idea of going quietly off to jail. I'll call you later.
Hello. Hi, Francis. I see. Honey, he was carrying a gun, Mike. He was up all night. Was it you he called toward morning? No, no. Uh, he could have been checking with Lieutenant Hayes or uh, maybe Gulf Transport. Oh, I'm afraid for him. More afraid than I've ever been in all these years. I haven't got anyone else to go to. Yes, yeah, so I'll do everything I can. Sure. Duke wants you to backstop me on these armored car robberies, doesn't he? Mike, if something happens tomorrow, you'll know that Harold wasn't involved, right? Mike, what am I going to do? If nothing happens, you could have tipped off the gang. Well, I think they're going to pull them their horns for a while. Now, if I were going to knock over that shipment, this is just where I'd do it. You're, you're, you're helping him dig my grave. Two men in dark blue station wagon, Louisiana number 5B5A559. It's on a stolen car hot sheet for last night. Rolling towards 90th. Do not, I repeat, do not intercept. Keep them in sight. Mike, I have a feeling you got lucky. Mike, if something happens tomorrow, you'll know that Harold wasn't involved, right? Yeah, me too. I said, hold it up. Well, that guard, Glendon, I don't know what got into him. He was aiming at Mike.
That's high there, boy. Tell you, boy. <laughs> well, how'd it go? Hi, Duke. It went. Gang got clobbered. You're off the hook. So is Hal. What is it? We heard from Washington, Mike. In 1951, Captain Harold Kemp led a brilliant investigation at the first provisional police stockade at Pusan. Where Frank Glendon was in charge. The informant who helped them break a black market narcotics ring was named Neil Porter. talk? Sure. We turned up some old army records going back to 1951, back to Korea. Back to you, Hal. And Frank Glendon, and Neil Porter. <laughs> That's ancient history. You always told me in an investigation you can never go back too far. Mike, I need a break. What would a break look like to you, Hal? Well, as far as the police or anybody else is concerned, I walk out of this smelling like a rose. I just killed a crooked guard. Everything you turned up will tie Glendon in. What about the other gang members? They're all dead. And Leona? Well, she's got a price. Yeah, most people do. Mike, why don't you try to understand that I won't give you any baloney about needing money to send the kids through school? I appreciate that. You're probably a little tired of playing that part anyway. What do you mean playing? Good old Hal. A tiring investigator who can't quite cut anymore. Keeps making all kinds of little mistakes. Desperately afraid of being put out to pasture. Well, the funny thing, kid, it wasn't that tough an act. Half the time it was for real. Sometimes I couldn't tell which is which. A oh, man does get tired. He lives a, a plain life. Plain house. Plain car. A plain, decent life. Now he sees the jail full of thugs and stumble bums. But he can see where they went wrong, see where maybe he has a chance to have the best of both worlds. Classic security officer's dilemma. Mike, why don't you walk away from it? Leave the wrap-up to the column writers, the headline writers, the cops. I'm not sure I can do that. Mike, I've got a gun in my hand. I'll do everything I can to help. Well, a couple of times that you took, there are hundreds that you didn't. I saved your life, Mike. I know that. something. It was good working with you again. Hal! What's going on?
operator. Get me the police. prison designer gets himself thrown into one of his own prisons to help his falsely accused brother escape death row. Prison Break, next on Mystery.